Good morning. Pat Zemer here with the MagnaWave Office Hours. Good morning uh, for this Tuesday morning. We're glad to be here. As you know, we come together every Tuesday morning as, as best we can. Last week I wasn't here. I wasn't feeling very good. I was kind of under the weather, so we weren't able to uh, visit last weekend, last week. But we are here today, so if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Please put them in the chat box here on Facebook, and uh, I will receive them. Or you can send me a text. Text your number. Text your question to 502-599-9972. It's 502-599-9972. Good morning, Tim. And I would be happy to phone you back and, uh, and have a discussion with you and answer any questions that you may have at that point. So whatever it is, health, uh, wellness, uh, something you'd like to talk about, about machines, training, uh, what's going on in the industry, where, where questions you have about the industry, whatever it may be, uh, I'm here to try to answer those questions for you. I do want to apologize. I've been fighting a cold, so I uh, may have a situation here. If I cough a little bit, I certainly apologize. Um, so, uh, questions, put them in there, and I'd be happy to answer them. Let me get it up here on my uh, phone here so we can see the uh, questions as they come up. Let's see if I'm here. I am. Okay, so let's, uh, if you have questions, um, folks, thanks for being here. Aaron, Karen, uh, Tracy, thanks for being here. Idle Hour, thanks for being here. Stephanie Henderson, Tracy Walker-Bush, and five other people are here at this point. So thanks for being here this morning. I do want to remind you that if you have questions about MagnaWave uh, or about PEMF in general, you can go to the MagnaWave PEMF International Education and Research Group page on Facebook and you can go into the search box on the upper left hand corner and type uh, something you want to know about. If you want to know about inflammation, you want to know about arthritis, whatever it is that you might want to uh, know about and it'll come up. Anything that's been covered, anything that's been posted about those particular topics will come up for your review. So it's a, it's a great resource for you to go learn more. Uh, about MagnaWave and see how specific things are done. On our Facebook page, where we are now, uh, we post information continually and we post testimonials continually, but you can't search. Once it's there and it's been passed over, it's very difficult to get it back up for you to, uh, to see. There's no search function on a Facebook <coughs> page, but in groups, there is. So you can go to, the, again, the uh, MagnaWave PEMF International Education and Research page and search for uh, any topic that you might want to <coughs> excuse me to discuss and again if you would like to visit with me on the phone it's 502-599-9722 502-599-9722 is that right I believe it's not I'm not sure if that's the right one or not we'll check that they'll put it up here and there if, if that's not the right number I get confused on that number um, all the time okay I want to tell you a little bit about this weekend I went to the brain tap symposium uh, in Raleigh North Carolina and where people came together brain tap is a is a device where you have uh, guided imagery recordings and you put uh, a, a goggle on and there's lights to help you maintain your attention while watching these guided imagery uh, or listening to these guided imagery messages and it helps you keep the attention to absorb the information to whatever you may want to have it for. They have it for depression, they have it for anxiety, they have it for energy, they have it for dealing with disease, you can have it for there are, are uh, guided imageries on golf, guided imagery on um, horse riding and horse competition and many different aspects that people may want to have some self-help that is available to them um, through this type of application and so we apply it uh, through our vibration beds to where someone can listen to the guided imagery while they're receiving the vibration therapy and the PEMF therapy from MagnaWave so we tie it together in that fashion you can use the, the goggles and the light with the MagnaWave as well there are just some different workarounds that you go through but it's really a neat therapy uh, dealing with mind and body <clears throat> and to that end I'm participating in a new book uh, with Dr. Bruce Lipton and Dr. Patrick Porter dealing with brain health 
and brain happiness. I'll be uh, contributing to the book and it'll be released here in the next 90 days or so I believe and uh, it should be very interesting dealing specifically with brain issues and I'll be approaching it in my area of the book from MagnaWave's perspective, the perspective of PEMF and uh, brain issues. So I'm looking forward to that and uh, let you know when it's when it's coming so you can uh, participate. Again, any questions, uh, please uh, give me a shout and I'd be happy to discuss them. Let me see if there's any. Here we go. Can MagnaWave help with horses with thin hoof walls? If so, how would I explain it to my client? Very good question. Um, actually, MagnaWave will enhance the growth of the hoof. It'll enhance the growth of your nails, basically. And the improved oxygenation, the improved blood flow to the area, uh, providing <coughs> there's not something stopping that from happening anatomically. If it's a thin hoof wall that's just there because of nourishment issues, uh, developmental issues, things like that, that the body needs to rebalance and better enhance those particular areas, then utilizing the MagnaWave to assist with that. When there are uh, wounds uh, on the hoof, uh, they're, they're, the healing of those wounds is sped up by a third to a half. Just like a broken bone, if there's a fracture, you can aid the healing process and, and intentionally uh, or initially speed it up uh, by a third to a half. So it will do the same thing uh, to the hoof, hoof wall. And there are people that, that want to grow the hoof and uh, for various reasons after an injury or they just want to have better hoof growth. You can use the paddle, you can use the butterfly, whatever it may be, and put it over the foot uh, six to eight minutes, uh, 15 minutes, depending on how often you can do it and want to do it. And it will certainly help with the uh, health and development of the hoof wall uh, of the horse. Great question, and I appreciate you asking. Um, and Diane, Diane, thanks for joining us this morning. Great for people and animals. Thank you so much. Uh, here's a question here. After acupuncture, how long should one wait to use MagnaWave? Well, it's really not the issue of how long you wait after the acupuncture. The biggest question that I have seen over the years, and I experienced this firsthand, uh, several years ago in Florida, we were treating a number of horses for a, uh, for a trainer, and um, and everything was going great, and everything was great. And, and But the trainer told me one day, he said, I'm having the acupuncturist come out this afternoon to analyze some of these some of these horses. Fine. And we were treating the horses all morning. Well, when the acupuncturist got there and began to go over the horses, we had already stimulated and released a lot of the uh, spots or the acupuncture points that the, that the acupuncturist uses to evaluate and to see what they're doing with the horses. And so they weren't really able to get in and do their, their, their work as they like to. So from that point, we always say that if an acupuncturist is coming to visit the horses, it is best to wait until after they have been there and then treat the animal to help with pain relief, to help with circulation, and those types of situations. So the answer to your question is you don't really have to wait long at all after an acupuncture session. If the acupuncturist feels that if they want to administer their, their treatment and their logic is let's wait uh, uh, five hours, 16 hours, 24 hours for my work to take hold, then honor what that person wants to do as long as the trainer is in that same uh, mindset and the horse owner is in that same mindset. But in many situations where they have used the acupuncture to open the meridians and to nourish specific areas of the body with the acupuncture stimulation, we follow up right away to help with inflammation reduction, to help the area that they're trying to work to. We often in our processes, and we do we covered in our training, to where we'll treat the area of the horse that is sore, or the, not sore, sensitive, the area of the horse that is sensitive, or the body if you're treating an animal or a person, and then you can go back and stimulate the acupuncture point that's, that is used for that particular area. You can do it before or after, or you can do it however. I've got um, um, Dr. Gary Nye uses MagnaWave and acupuncture all the time. His process, he will acupunct he will magnawave prior to his acupuncture treatment in order to get everything opened up in the horse and everything going and then but he knows what he's going to do. He knows the points he's going to access. He knows what he expects to happen with it. And so he goes in and approaches it from that type of situation. So it's really up to how you work together 
with the acupuncturist but I would certainly if the if you haven't worked together I would let the acupuncturist go first and or have them go first and then you follow up afterwards again we're dealing with circulation and uh, uh, pain relief and help after those types of treatments have been administered quite often they bring these uh, uh, complementary treatments in laser, acupuncture, massage, chiropractic, whatever it may be to help realign the horse, to put things in balance as they should be. But they don't, those processes don't always deal to relieve the pain that the animal or the person is having at that instant. And so then the MagnaWave can come in as a pain relief or a pain support for the applications that they've received very complimentary and I'm certainly a, a, a supporter of complimentary use of various uh, modalities uh, in the treatment for health and wellness. Great question. Let's see if we've got something else there. Um, let me make sure I got them all. Okay, now I'll come down here and take a quick look. How about combining MagnaWave with chiropractic treatments better to MagnaWave before or after. This goes along with the complementary complementary aspect. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a discussion I had this weekend uh, with the folks at, the, at some of the folks at the BrainTap conference. Now, if we're dealing with people, it doesn't make any difference whether you're talking massage, chiropractic, or whatever. In many cases, people are very, if you're going to adjust them, now people are different. A chiropractor can manipulate a person pretty easily, uh, providing there are not some size restrictions or stature restrictions or things like that. But when you get into a large animal like a horse that's really out of alignment, very muscular, and can fight you in doing the alignment. We have found that if you treat the horse for five or 10 minutes prior to the chiropractic treatment, that the adjustment and quite often is easier. It, it's more easily uh, handled to manipulate the horse. They're more receptive to what you're doing. And I've had this many times. I was with a, chi a chiropractor, uh, equine chiropractor in Phoenix a couple of years ago and he was telling me about this horse and we happened to be at the farm where the horse was and the gentleman was saying, oh, I do this and I do that and it won't help to, to magnawave that horse before I do the adjustment because I can go up there and do it. So I said, fine, adjust the horse, let's, let's, let's do it. So we went out and he went to adjust the horse, working on his neck and uh, neck extension so on and so forth and the horse fought him and not didn't fight him but you know just resisted the process that was that was taking place and I said do you feel like you got it yeah I think I've got it pretty well I said okay allow me to treat the horse for a minute so I simply treated the neck and the shoulders of the horse for about 10 minutes just a quick overview uh, just a, kind of a brushing type of situation on the horse and then I said okay let's do it again and he was absolutely amazed number one the horse was relaxed Number two, the horse was ready to be manipulated, and he took this horse that he very that he always struggled with and did it. It opened his eyes at the benefit. Now, with that said, quite often when we do um, uh, when they are going to chiropractic a horse, again, same thing like I was talking about just a moment ago uh, with the acupuncture. If they Put the horse back in alignment. What we don't want the horse to be in pain and the horse to go do things to pull itself right back out of alignment. So quite often, post chiropractic treatment, then we go over the horse to help enhance the the inflammation reduction and the pain relief that the chiropractic adjustment is seeking to get the horse in alignment so the horse can be better uh, pain free to itself. So we assist that whole process after the chiropractic adjustment. So it really comes down to a personal preference. It comes down to the preference of the chiropractor that you're working with, how they may feel that it is best addressed to do it before or after, but either will work just fine. It really comes down to a personal preference uh, at that type of situation. Great question. Thanks for asking. Very complimentary method uh, that we're talking about this morning. Uh, let's see here. Let me check again to see if we've got a question. How long should you wait to MagnaWave after a mare has a foal? <coughs> if you're talking about MagnaWaving the mare or MagnaWaving the foal, uh, the situation would be as long as the mare is healthy and there's no bleeding or no problems uh, from the birth that are that could potentially be in the way, then you're free to MagnaWave 
as soon as the veterinarian says it's okay for you to magnawave, uh, many people will magnawave to, to deal with hip pain, to deal with, you know, whatever it may be. Quite often, animals, uh, uh, mares, when they're ready to, they'll have some back issues or they'll have some things going on that they really don't uh, go in and do a lot about right at the end of the of the birth cycle. So it's good to be able to help the, the, the recovery processes, the blood circulation, the blood oxygenation, the relaxation, all those things that you can provide to that mare uh, after the birth and and can it help with lactation and all that kind of stuff absolutely with regard to the foal uh, typically there are not serious injury serious situations that you need to deal with so that wouldn't be anything that you would necessarily do however i had a situation uh three years ago now in lexton kentucky to where uh, a foal was born and it flipped over and hit its head and the vet thought we were going to have to put it down and it was really a bad issue and as a last ditch effort they contacted me they couldn't find the local practitioner at that instant in Lexington and asked me to drive down and I went down and treated the foal and the and the, it was just glassy eyed and laying there and couldn't do anything and I simply treated the head where the foal went over and knocked its head and its neck and within three or four minutes his eyes uh, cleaned up and he started looking he couldn't see he, he looked he was basically blind and we basically gave him a circulation back and, and freed things up relief pressure that's all we were doing was relieving inflammation relieving pressure in the head so the blood could flow the way it was supposed to so the nerves could operate the way they were supposed to and within uh, 12 hours uh, the foal was on its feet the foal was doing well and the practitioner was there treating the foal every day and, and the horse did fine and when we thought because of the head injury which could have very well happened you got to catch inflammation soon the sooner you catch the inflammation and keep it at bay or keep it from developing, you solve a lot of problems because a lot of times inflammation causes additional problems. Inflammation of the brain in this case was keeping the horse from seeing, was keeping the horse from standing, was just totally disoriented and because it just couldn't get proper flow. Just simply helping with the oxygenation and the flow brought this uh, uh, foal around. So it was really a, a neat type situation. I uh, hope that helps, answers your question. Uh, let's see. How do you best explain to clients that PMF is best in a program? I aim to see horses every four to six weeks. Well, <coughs> excuse me. You need to kind of look at it. Uh, tell a story. Tell, there are, we have a million stories in the various locations in the blog on the website at the uh, PEMF International Education and Resources of what people have done and in, in my case for example I had a prostate scare a few years ago and I used my MagnaWave to treat myself prior to needing prior to the uh, uh, biopsy that they did and so forth and by the time they did that what was there was dead and benign and uh, so we pursued it very actively. My point is, since that time, I have continued to treat myself on a daily basis, or certainly every two or three days, to just stay ahead of the game, keep the area of the body healthy and happy, and, and things work out a lot better. So tell your clients a story of how someone uses it. My wife, for example, with herniated discs, uh, we, we she has access to the equipment, but it really, her herniated disc problem that used to bother her daily, now sneaks up on her, uh, it, you know, over, she, we can't change the herniated disc, but we can keep the inflammation at bay. So every three or four weeks, she needs two or three treatments to help keep her shoulder and her back healthy and happy, if you will. So tell a story to your people. Explain to them how good blood flow is important to everyday living. Why they do it at home, they eat properly, they take vitamins they do all these things and we are very naturally improving the blood oxygenation and the blood circulation the blood flow of the body and that's something that's very important to do and so if they did it to their horses just as a precautionary measure to help their horses remain healthier and happier their children their dogs themselves uh, to maintain their good body balance that's something that's that's always uh, very important let me see if I've had any uh, text here I'm checking this here. Okay, 502-599-9722. Uh, I hope I got that number right. 
and um, send me a text and I'd be happy to phone you and if you could give me a call I'll uh, send you some MagnaWave gear to uh, for your uh, effort in visiting with us and I'll also send you a sample of the new Victory Hemp product that will be bringing uh, Victory and the uh, <coughs> Green Remedy Hemp products that will be bringing uh, to you shortly for you to try so um, that's the situation there let me see if any more questions um, on the Facebook page um, hey John from London have you ever explained using various electrolyte products for clients when using PEMF to see that it if that improves results well John we've talked a lot about it's very important hydration is very important to the whole process because the, the, the process that we're doing stimulating the lymph flow stimulating the blood circulation can require some hydration to help support that would electrolytes be a benefit to that without saying so th to keep the body hydration in balance and there are times when when horses experience conditions and people experience conditions and the result uh, because they don't have the right electrolyte balance in their body or there is a particular uh, dietary um, uh, deficiency or supplemental vitamin deficiency in the body that we can't do anything about but if they have good maintenance of their vitamin uh, position in their body or their hydration position in their body and their electrolyte balance is all beneficial uh, so if you do that stuff and you keep that stuff in balance it will aid the processes it will aid what we're doing um, uh, with the oh my camera angle changed let me come back over here it my camera angle did change we opened up the whole the whole view there but uh, we're back down to a uh, to a different picture hope that answers your question so yes um, John it does help and it is good to suggest to your clients that it that they drink good fluids uh, enhancing fluids would be good because we're going to enhance everything that happens uh, with the body in that type of situation okay um, your camera is facing the socket I don't know what that means my camera focus is it better now is my camera back in focus looks as though it is from my view here I wonder what I did to uh, oh I did it with the, when I picked up my phone I changed my camera focus is it okay now let me know uh, hi from Texas hey Leslie thanks for um, Wendy told me to fix my camera focus I think I got it let me see if I can come here a little closer and just change it back and uh, here comes a motor coach behind me uh, coming in let's see yes everything's fixed up there well thanks for letting me know um, how long should we wait after hock injections to magnify <coughs> great question and this applies for any injection that's that, that you may give it to a dog or to a person or to an animal with a hock injection uh, over the years when they've injected hocks on horses uh, and animals um, with an injection um, uh, like um, Lubricin, uh, uh, gosh, why, why am I drawing a blank on uh, uh, on the acid? But uh, at any rate, when they inject into the the the, 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 the bursa of the of the area, it's not going to leave. I mean, they, they inject it into the into the, the sac that surrounds the the bone, the joint, and that whole type of thing. So it's not going to come out. So you can. Basically, if there's soreness up and down the leg around the hock and if there's inflammation there, that injection will help that inflammation. That's what it's designed to do. You can enhance the results of that injection immediately. And so it's okay. I've always, we've always done it. Quite often the vet comes and injects and we're treating and then we go treat, treat those areas. Now, if they're injecting a tissue block around a joint or somewhere to where they're to to work on something we can we can flush that out so you don't want to do that if they do that type of injection as a block you want to let it do its job you can treat other areas you can treat the back the hips the upper leg whatever you want to do but they're blocking an ankle for example we don't want to do anything to move what they have done away again if they're injecting the joint and the the, the bursa or the the the, the 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 volume sac around the joint it, it it's not going to leave that 
that sac. So it, you're okay to treat most normally in those type situations. However, I would always check with the veterinarian to make sure that they understand what you're doing and then they, they concur with what you're doing. Some people say, let's wait 24 hours. Uh, others wait six to 10 hours. Whatever the situation is certainly uh, the guidance that you want to pursue and uh, follow when you're doing those types of uh, situations. Now, some way, for some reason, my questions, oh, here we go. Um, uh, Paul, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, if you, again, if you ever like to visit with me, it's 502-599-9972. Yeah, my number's wrong on my sheet here. It's 9972. Send me a text. We'll visit, and we'll send you some gear and a, and a hemp sample. Um, let's see how long we've been going. Well, it's about 9.30. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please put them in the chat box. I'd be more than happy uh, to answer them for you, whatever they may uh, pertain to. Uh, I have, did have a question that came through. Uh, the practitioner asked, can we get C60 at a wholesale cost? Yes, if you are a certified practitioner and you're part of our program, you can purchase the C60 and the HydroWave and various product, products at a wholesale price for resale uh, to your customers if that's how you would like uh, to pursue it. So yes, that is certainly available to you. Um, another question that was asked, uh, they have a three-year-old French bulldog has slipped disc and his back legs out, back legs paralyzed. Uh, went to the vet, got steroid shot, and is on meds. Was wondering if this therapy was something that could help him. Most certainly, um, it, it's kind of thing that with a slipped disc we can help uh, reduce the inflammation, reduce the pain, maybe help things be put back into place. You want to be very cautious. And the strength that you use when you're dealing with discs, comfort is the key. And, and certainly um, high is not, in many of those cases, is not always necessary. Uh, higher settings, so you want to be very comfortable and you want to supply the therapy to the area. Remembering that when our devices are on low, it's the same type of signal. We're penetrating the blood cell, allowing the cell to take on better oxygen better more and have better oxygenation and, and allowing better blood flow to the area when you're dealing with a disc for example it's right at the surface of the back I mean it's just like just right there you know you know what I mean and and so you can get right on it you don't have to have a higher type of setting in order to do that like you might do on a joint when you want to really help get the blood flow going and get things to where it's more pliable and gives a better range of motion so on and so forth higher settings are often used and recognized. To that end, I want to point out and make one thing clear with regard to some of the studies that we're doing uh, currently at the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, the um, Los Angeles Palm Beach Veterans Hospital, and the University of Miami in Florida. The studies that we're conducting there, we're using three different types of machines. There's a lot of discussion in the marketplace about, oh, people that, people that do build low power machines, they're fine. They work fine. They're slow. They're not as quick and rapid to deploy the therapy that we're looking for. You don't get the result as, as rapidly. If someone's happy with that, fine. But, in, in, but competitors will say, oh, well, you don't need it, and, you, and it's too much power, and it's this and it's that, and that's fine. People are going to say whatever they want to say for their benefit of their particular piece of equipment. Our position in this is to do in these three studies, all three studies is being conducted and independently tested with three different devices. Our low power, our semi device basically, the semi five, semi three device, the mid range device, which is a moderately powered device, and then what we use as the Maya, the high powered PEMF. All three devices are being used. All three devices are being evaluated. The results will be there from all three devices. Our goal to show that all of it works, it's just a difference again on timing application. We feel that the high power devices gives you more versatility in how you approach the health and wellness aspect and, and, and what you need to do. As I was talking earlier about inflammation, when an athlete strains or when you strain your back and you need help, the quicker you get to it, the better the result. And so we want to stop that inflammation as, as rapidly as possible and help things out. So that's what's happening with the three studies, with the three types of devices that are being used uh, in that situation. Um, how often do we need to attend MagnaCon since this is the only CE from what I understand to <coughs> maintain 
certification. Well, um, anytime you come to MagnaCon and you attend the uh, the uh, the speakers and the and the classes, it certainly applies uh, for your CE required to renew your certification every two years. So obviously, you don't have to come every year because you can come when your when your certification is coming up. I encourage you to come every year because we have new we're new information, new depth, new training, uh, more in, enhanced training. We're trying to do that, and the things that you can learn. From people and the stories they share, the stories you can. I mean, frankly, if you came to MagnaCon and hit it up with somebody and picked up one or two good stories that you can take home and use for yourself in your practice, it's well worth the expense at that point to do that. And and because you can, you, that's that's magic. And if you picked up new stories each year, it just improves and gives you a better depth of where you're going and that's not to sell MagnaCon it's just to show that the value is there what you can learn sometimes and it's amazing uh, and when I go and I listen to Dr. Marty or, or, or Dr. Nye and and the other people that are going to be with us this year and they, they they're saying the same thing when Dr. Amanda starts talking and she's saying the same basic basic thing but this time she says it a little different and all of a sudden to me it registers 100 percent differently than maybe what it did before and it just continually brings clarity and it continually one thing that, that, that MagnaCon can do is to get you to understand the success that people are having, the, the health and wellness that they're enhancing in themselves, their animals, their friends, their pets, the whole nine yards, and that confidence builder. If you're confident and you believe in what you're doing, and by associating with people who believe in what they're doing, it helps you do that, <coughs> Excuse me. your clients will understand that and see that. The real answer is you only need to attend if you want to use MagnaCon as your CE to as often as you need to to maintain that uh, stat that that status with the uh, certification. Okay, let's see if I have another one here. Let's. Um, oh, now it's trying to. Um, all right, I don't see any other questions at this point. Um, all right, we're still going. Yes. Um, Glad you folks are with me this morning. Let me make sure someone has not tried to send a text. Too heavy phone call. All right. Nope. Clean there. Oh, there we go. I knocked the camera out. Um, all right. So any other questions, uh, please uh, do that. I do want to cover one area. We receive emails once in a while. Um, you know, and I did it this weekend. When, when we were at this symposium, some folks came up that had equipment from other people and they started asking the differences and they want to know can they do this or, or can they do that. And it's certainly our plan and our goal at MagnaWave, PEMF therapy is our goal. And, and we operate on the premise that, that there's plenty for everyone and there really is. Uh, you know, you look in your city, how many chiropractors are there? How many massage therapists are there? And if they, if they believe in what they're doing and people see it, they can be successful at, at, at what they are doing. And it, it's not our goal to, uh, to, to throw others under, under the bus. It, it's just not the thing we do. I mean, uh, but we get emails all the time where people say, your equipment is outdated. You, they have more uh, updated equipment. They have more price ranges of equipment. They have all this kind of stuff. You're using 20-year-old technology, and their technology is brand new. To that end, to answer that one question that some people are putting on their websites and how they're promoting their particular equipment. There are no other companies in the United States in the high power PMF area that are doing studies, that are funded studies, third party studies conducted by universities at university level to and, and going to look at the results and put them out there and, and, and to do that. Other companies are not doing that. We are. We are uh, part of an organization that safety tests our equipment, uh, specifically our, uh, our FDA equipment that we're working to, to move through the FDA, FDA processes. If you want to ship equipment out of the country uh, for human use, it has to be safety inspected in the United States for electrical safety. And that's just part of the deal. You can export for veterinary, but you can't export for human. The, the devices that we have for human are now uh, in the final stage, and maybe we've received a letter in, in California for CE approval in Europe, for 
human use, CE medical use in Europe, Canada, uh, other countries around the world, and, and we're doing these things. So, and we have de devices that run from seven thousand dollars, as we know, they can get up into the mid twenties, and, and so and they're digital and they're brand new, and we're updating them every year. So when you read this stuff, just analyze that someone's only going to throw somebody under the bus if they feel that they have to throw them under the bus. My competitors. <clears throat> Many of them build fine equipment. And when I say that, many of them, it take, it's hard. It's hard to develop your business and hard to build quality equipment. And many times it takes years to develop a piece of equipment to get it to where it really works great or it's really sturdy enough or whatever the situation may be. But the PMF therapy works well. And people have it out there and it's out there to, to be used. And, and so I, I, I always say, people say to me, what's that Spagna Wave apart? What, what would you say? To me, and I did it this weekend, I looked at somebody who was using uh, a competitor's piece of equipment but wants to, wanted to come to one of our pieces of equipment because it's lighter weight, it's easier for them to move around, it's digital, so on and so forth. And I said, but look, if you're happy where you are and you get along with those people and they support you the way you want to be supported, please don't just bury, you know, tear down those bridges, you, you know, find the family that you want to be with, that you're comfortable with. I hope it's us. I, I do, uh, you know, but, but on the other hand, I, I want you to understand and achieve, get the service that you want, get the support that you want, and that's the important thing. So pick a family that you're comfortable with, uh, a family that can work with you, and, and or a business. Pick a business that you're comfortable with, a business that supports you in what you want want to do, and that's the key. That's what sets a company apart for you or for me. When I'm looking for suppliers, when I'm looking for uh, supplements that we can add, I mean, this whole thing that people ask me, oh, here I go, I'm getting off on a little thing here. Uh, why do you carry supplements? Well, as you know, around the world, uh, our devices are used in, in disease uh, treatment uh, that it's not necessarily used for in the United States all the time. And there are people that use various supplements to enhance the disease process that they're fighting, to enhance the healing process of that disease. So we like to make those supplements available to people so they can learn about them, apply them to their life however they wish on, on their whatever disease state that they're dealing with and they want to try to find some things that, that work with them. And so that's our goal. That's why we have the various supplements that we have. We're not getting back into the hemp area just to carry hemp. Hemp is used a lot for pain relief, for relaxation with, with people who are fighting various serious diseases uh, in this country and outside of this country. And so we want to kind of put packages together. Something that we don't have on the website that I would love to put there that I use all the time is ozone therapy. Ozone therapy is very beneficial to the to the body and to help it to be, the immune state of the body remain healthy and that whole thing. So again, I'm a very complimentary type of person and what I like to do. And so that's something, and it's also used for many different diseases around the world uh, to help the body fight those types of things. You know, if one soldier is good, five soldiers uh, are, are is better. Uh, you know, you can't have a football team one against eleven. You gotta have you gotta have all the right players on the football team to be able to uh, to play the game well. So that's kind of where I am and where we are on the supplementation situation um, um, as we approach it at MagnaWave. If you got something you want us to look at, we're happy to do that. Uh, always, I'm always looking to uh, to do new things. And and you know, you have to change to stay the same. That's just, that's for you as a practitioner. Uh, for someone to think I'm going to buy this machine and I'm going to do this and I'm going to be in business and the business is just going to fall on the door. Doesn't happen. Uh, you have to believe in what you're doing and you have to convince your customers that you believe in what you're doing and then they will believe in, in what's going on. But you have to change to stay the same. You got to know the stories. You got to know the new advancements in the therapy. For example, something that to me has, has changed the game tremendously, and that is the, the depression area that we're using the PEMF for people for, as a sense of well-being, which aids depression, <coughs> you know, the depression, working, fighting depression, but also the new advancements with PEMF for glioblastoma brain tumors, how they're using PEMF uh, for glioblastoma to help retard, slow the growth of tumors, which it will do, to reduce the size of tumors, which it will do, and, and, and things like that. So 
great advancements are happening to give it, it, it credibility to the wellness that we're looking to bring to people on an everyday general basis to improve their wellness. So it's, it's exciting today. When I first started 19 years, 18 years ago, uh, all these things, there were only one or two devices approved for human use. Now there's five, six, there's more coming every day. We've got our devices in line for um, FDA approval and we're working very hard to get that accomplished. And so it's just changing daily. You need to stay up on that, you need to feel that, and you need to share that uh, with your customers. Let's see if we've got any more questions. Uh, if we don't have any, I don't want to hold you up and keep you from uh, getting on and enjoying your day. I have another meeting here in just a little bit that I'm going to need to uh, to visit with and attend. So if you do have a question, simply put it in the chat box. I'd be happy to uh, answer it for you. Uh, Brad's watching. Good morning, Brad. Um, and uh, be able to... Uh, I'm going this weekend. I'm going to the ACA. It's American Chiropractic Association of Sports Therapists. Uh, we'll, in Orlando. So we'll be heading down to Orlando. We were up in Raleigh. We're on our way down to Orlando at this point. And uh, to go to, to attend this meeting, we'll be going to the U.S. Olympic tennis facility uh, to visit there um, and to meet with those folks and to see how they, the various aspects of sports therapy. We're working trying to get in with the sports therapy people to understand uh, what they're doing. I, I have to tell you another story. A week ago, in fact, that's where I, I was already getting my cold before I left, but I really brought a cold home. I went to Phoenix. I flew out to Phoenix uh, in the evening, spent the day with the, in the Cincinnati Reds organization, and then flew home the red eye after that, and that's when I really got to uh, not feeling good. But I, to my surprise, when, when we got there and we're meeting with the, with the Reds organization, they've been using the device uh, uh, over the winter. Uh, they started using it at the end of last uh, baseball season uh, for their pitching staff initially, uh, for people with Tommy John surgery and sore elbows and shoulders and so forth. Now they're expanding it into the, the basis of the team, hamstring injuries, whatever it may be, backs. I mean, you know, they take a dive for a for a catch and they wrench their back and so we get on it quickly things are good anyway I walk into this meeting and uh, uh, they're going I'm going to explain this to all the trainers on the staff and there's some doctors there on the staff and if it's something new to them they don't understand it and they don't uh, you know where it's going to go well uh, I walk in there and there's a gentleman there and they introduce him to me his name is Dr. Bodenhausen from uh, Bodenhausen and Ellis in Louisville, Kentucky, in Phoenix with the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, Bodenhausen and Ellis is one of the premier orthopedic sports uh, offices or practices in the country. They work with a lot of top athletes. And so there was no pressure on me to be standing in front of Dr. Bodenhausen uh, explaining what I do. And I told him straight away, oh my God, you know, uh, I know who you are. I I'm certainly. Uh, pleasure to meet you and now I get to talk <laughs> and so I did I did the presentation we did demonstration we showed them how it worked we explained them how they could use it and for in further depth with their uh, company with their practice with their athletes and all of a sudden some questions started coming from the doctor and he was asking questions how I would implement this and how I would do that and how we would approach it from this perspective and I was answering his questions and uh, when everything was completed and we were ready to, to wrap it up uh, the doctor came up to me and he said this is very interesting you need to go to my clinic in Louisville meet with my head physical therapist tell him I sent you because I can certainly see how we can implement this with our various therapies that we're using and that's where we want to go that's where we want to get so people can it's it's not something that they've not heard of and so therefore we don't need to do it you know how that goes we want to integrate it and bring it in to to their whole real life processes so that that opportunity alone uh, you know made the trip worthwhile to be able to get to meet and discuss and I asked him I said you know did was I clear did I did I say anything that I shouldn't have did I approach any issues that maybe uh, you would tell me as a professional doctor that you know it needs to be looked at differently and he said no he said you know I, I think there's certainly an application for various complementary therapies in what we're doing and we need to embrace that uh, more openly in the sports world and I that's cool 
so that was the trip to Phoenix where I came, brought my cold home. <coughs> that I'm, you know, right here. Good thing you can't get it through the camera and through the microphone. But that was an interesting trip. This weekend, uh, be at the U.S. Olympic Tennis Facility. Uh, be dealing with a lot of folks in sports therapy from the chiropractic perspective. So I'm looking forward to that, and I will share that information with you. Uh, next week when we get together and so there's always things happening always things changing and always my goal is to bring it to you uh, so you can learn from it grow from it and, and better utilize it for yourself uh, if you're not a practitioner you're just using this wonderful therapy on yourself or as a practitioner to uh, help you understand how you can help more people and move forward with that uh, go reds terry said that's right um morning bob bob's watching so let's see here um, it, we have a practitioner asking if it's okay to treat a horse under sedation, and if not, how soon after can they start treating? Well, the secret there is it's okay to treat a horse when they're sedate. There's no question. Uh, they do that. In fact, with shockwave, they sedate the horse and then apply the shockwave therapy in many cases. And so it's okay to treat as a horse is sedated. What we recommend because the magna wave can enhance the metabolization, the absorption of various things. If they're, if they're in the process, if they're going to sedate the horse let the, or the person, let them do that and let it assimilate. Let it metabolize, get into the system, and then treat. You don't want a situation where they are sedating and you treat and it enhances the amount of sedation so the horse becomes too relaxed or the person becomes too relaxed to where they're, I don't know, I don't, you know one of those kind of things. So, <coughs> again, excuse me, the situation is, I had a cough button. If I was on radio and I used to do radio programs, I had a cough button. I could hit the button, cough, and you didn't know it. On the camera, it's a little different situation. I could silence it, but I'm still going to see it. Anyway, uh, so that's the kind of situation there. You can certainly treat Again, that is up to the doctor that's dealing with this type of situation. They may say, let's wait uh, for an hour or two or let's do whatever. But it is certainly okay to treat uh, if, if an animal has been sed If an animal is, is super sensitive and having horrible problems in its back and they're going to work on it and they want to work on it, but they got to sedate the animal to calm the animal down or the person down after an injury or something, doesn't mean that you still can't go work on that hip to help the blood flow and the oxygenation in the hip to help things along. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see here. Um, thanks for relaying that question, Aaron. If you have any other questions, uh, simply put them up there and I'd be happy to uh, have a look at them um, at this time and answer any questions uh, that you may have. Um, let's see here. Um, any other questions in the chat box? Let me put it up and have a look. No, it looks light. How are we doing on time? Oh, it's about 10 minutes to the hour of 10 this morning. And so uh, don't want to keep you any longer than necessary, but I do want to answer whatever questions you may have. So if you do have a question, put it up there. I'll wait another minute or so to uh, potentially answer those uh, questions that you may that you may have. And, and um, I certainly want to do that. Um, I, I, it's always fun to do this for me, and it's always, uh, I learn things in having this discussion. Let me make sure that no one texted. Uh, let's see if there's a, just verify that if somebody wants to visit. Nope, everything's quiet on that front. I don't guess anybody needs any gear this week. That's all right. Um, so I know it's hard to uh, pick up the phone and call and want to have a conversation. A lot of us are nervous doing that, and I, I certainly understand that. I just like to, uh, we learn more when we can have a conversation because we deal with the questions in and out. We don't, I, you just don't get my answer, and that's all when you may say, oh, and when you ask me something, it adds uh, more, a little bit, potentially more depth to the answer that we're trying to give. So uh, at any rate, uh, it's been a pleasure to be here this morning. I'll let you know what happens at the ACA meeting this uh, weekend uh, coming up. Uh, myself and uh, uh, Tim Gleason from our staff will be attending this meeting and uh, looking to meet with some docs and learn more and uh, help the sports therapy aspect uh, of what we're doing with MagnaWave and PEMF therapy. So again, thanks for being with me. If you have questions, uh, send us an email. Uh, send an email to Aaron. Send me an email if you uh, if you wish. Oh, let's see. Got a question. Yesterday I treated a client who had a pulled muscle in his calf. Today he feels worse. Is that normal? Well, sometimes we have 
we recognize one pain. And then we go treat something and then we find a second pain to come up. I used to have that a lot with horse racing uh, jockeys. We'd treat their low back, they'd come back the next day, now my shoulders are bothering me. The thing you want to know and what I don't know about your treatment is exactly the whole uh, question on the situation. And you always want to make sure that you're treating at a comfortable setting because it's like a deep tissue massage. We can give a deep tissue massage to the point that they're going to be a little sore tomorrow. Uh, but they're going to be feel better the next day, but we don't need to do that. So we sneak up on the strength level and approach it from that perspective. A lot, and I and I'm not I don't know if it's man or a woman, but I had somebody this past weekend that I was treating, and that's the typical thing: treating their back. Turn it up. Oh, I, that feels so great. Turn it up. What I do when someone tells me that is I turn it down. And if I have someone, and this is the other thing that as a practitioner we need to learn, if you have someone that says, well, I'm, you're treating my calf and that's fine, but I really don't feel anything in your treatment. You set it to where you think it needs to be. You set it to where our training tells you it needs to be. If someone is telling you they can't feel it and you continue to turn it up, you know it's there. They're getting it. Even if they can't feel it to the point that they want to, it, it does not mean that that's that all the way up is good so always keep those things in mind so it, it could be a situation here to where they're having some ancillary pain as a re result of what you were treating it could be that they it were asking you to do things and they were asking at a level that they didn't need and so therefore they could be a little sore afterwards I've had that I've had people that I have made s more sensitive but they feel wonderful the next day like a deep tissue massage if that's their goal and what they're after and they understand that going in that's fine so you need to approach each situation uh, with clarity and understanding <coughs> excuse me I hope that helps um, but I would certainly uh, go back and treat that person again and the other thing you might want to do if you're, you don't just treat the calf treat the ankle treat the thigh treat the hip you make sure there's good blood flow going everywhere so this person gets the maximum flow that they need to clean up the area and to enhance the overall stability of the healing process in the area okay great question thanks for asking um, and uh, you know as always I you know I want to answer the questions that you may have sometimes they're easy questions to answer sometimes they're not sometimes the, if the question is asked in such a way that I need to be very uh, transparent and forthcoming and how the answer is presented and how you need to take that and apply it to yourself and to your clients down the road and to that question if you have more discussion you want to have on that and you'd like to discuss it further call the office ask for Erin so she can fully get a grasp on what you're treating how you were treating it who you were treating what caused what they we're doing and that can give a lot of depth to uh, the answer that you really need to have for, uh, for your customer. So call Aaron at the office 502-742-7868 uh, 502-742-7868 ask for Aaron and she'd be more than happy to take a deeper look at any question or anything that you're dealing with as far as utilizing the MagnaWave PEMF therapy. Okay, uh, no other questions. I want to thank you for joining me today. Have a great day. Wave on with some great health and wellness and have a great week. See you next time. Bye-bye.